be presented uh, by Brendan Dunn Lee and uh, Dr. Zelko Jabakapa. So Brendan joined QBE in May 2017 as the Asia Pacific Head of Engineering. He has since taken on the additional role of Regional Head of Property. And before moving to Singapore prior to insurance, Brendan worked in various industries, including petrochemical, industrial and real estate. He's a fellow of the Chartered Insurance Institute, and you can see their smiling faces, and the Australia and New Zealand Institute of Insurance and Finance. And he's also our representative for Asia. And uh, Dr. Zelko Jabakapa is a senior partner for the Geotechnical Consulting Group in the UK and is a visiting professor at the City University in London. He's worked in the field of geotechnical engineering since graduating in 1988, so for a good few years. He has numerous qualifications in the UK and in Serbia. And one of the areas he specializes in is the investigation of geotechnical failures, including landslides. And I have personal knowledge of his expertise in that area, having worked with him on a very large case. Uh, he's worked all over the world and is regularly called on as an expert witness. So can I hand you over now to uh, Brendan, I think, who's going to start um, presenting the paper. I think you're muted. Thank you, Richard. I'm just trying to find this uh, display settings. While I'm doing that, I'll maybe do a quick plug for you, Richard. Uh, on Friday, we have a coating failure webinar via the GIA in Singapore. So if you want to get up at three o'clock in the morning on Friday, Richard, and scout for some talent, uh, could be uh, quite useful for you. So maybe quick help on this duplicate uh, where am uh, i finding okay this? brendan um at, yep. yeah at the top of your screen you will see display settings mm, no, i'm not getting that oh there, here we are now so apologies yeah drop the uh, yeah yep and and hit the top one hit the top one okay Oh, I think you hit the bottom one. Okay, don't worry. Go into slideshow now. Brilliant. Is that Working. looking okay? Okay. Perfect. Sorry about that, um, everyone. So, uh, welcome to our presentation on uh, landslides. Um, actually, it's pretty difficult to uh, <laughs> do a comprehensive uh, presentation on landslides in 30 to 40 minutes, but Dr. Zelko and myself would do the best. Uh, on behalf of our team to do so. Um, just a little bit about our team. Um, our team um, composes of uh, people from across Europe, South America and Asia. And uh, I'm not going to go through the names here as we don't have that much time, but uh, suffice to say, um, you know, a great bunch of guys with high levels of industry expertise. So the great benefit uh, from being involved with working groups is how much you can learn from others and also uh, the making friends of people from all around the world. So, you know, hopefully people uh, watching will be signing up for the uh, working groups for next year. You know, so on to landslide. So, I mean, of course, you know, we see landslides in the news so often, and some of these might be ranging just from, you know, landslides on railway or road embankments from just a, a few cubic meters to very large ones, which might be half a, half a million cubic meters, such as uh, the recent events, you know, that we've seen in Japan and the Himalayas. Um, these were seen all around the world in the news, unfortunately. Now, for the insurance industry, uh, natural catastrophes have always been an important topic, but of course, now with all the noise around climate change, uh, it's become even uh, more important. Um, but despite improvements both in the quality and the price of monitoring uh, equipment, it's not just a, a cat issue. It's also as a result of uh, human intervention with Mother Earth, uh, you know, movement with earthworks, vibration, mining, blasting, 
disruption of natural drainage paths and of course it can also be uh, due to uh, deforestation um, which can also be as a result of drought and bushfire as well. Uh, Manuela was talking about uh, obviously the impact of, of bushfire earlier and it's also um, due to silly decisions like piling a large amount of rock spoil on, uh, on the crest of a mountain um, and we'll talk a little bit uh, about that later but I'll hand over to Dr Zelko uh, with his specialist experience to take you through the, uh, the real sort of deep technical aspects of landslides and we'll discuss some uh, underwriting issues uh, a bit later. So Dr Zelko, if I can just uh, hand over to you. Yeah, Th thank you, Brandon. And thank you, thank you, Richard, for kind words. Um, uh, let me set up a scene. So the, um, in order to, to go into some basics uh, uh, description of the landslides, as you probably know, landslides occur mainly due to effect of gravity, uh, although other factors uh, also contribute, may contribute to the to the landslides, including but not limited to the uh, geology, topography, weathering, drainage, and construction. Brandon mentioned that some of the issues some issues uh, uh, earlier, uh, and we will go through uh, 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 in some details in the next slide. Can we move to next slide, Brendan, please? Right. Uh, what I would like uh, you to take from, uh, from this slide is uh, uh, there are basically four types of uh, landslides and can be categorized as falls, topples, slides or flows. On the left hand side of the slide, there is a catalog or cartoons uh, of different types of landslides. And you can see it's a false, uh, topples, uh, slides, flows, or spreading. It's the same kind of things. But it's a quite often that landslides not occur as a consequence of one um, uh, type of a movement. They are results of combination of several types of, of the movements. On the right, right hand side of these slides, again, there is uh, the, the cartoons with the, some common uh, uh, wording, which are related to the, to the landslide, such as uh, crown fissures, crown of the landslide, main scarp, body of the, of the landslide, surface of rupture of the, of the landslide, toe of the landslide or foot of the landslide and typically water. I will come back to some of these issues in the next couple of slides and try to, to show you uh, each of these slides and uh, in uh, reality. Next slides, Brandon, please. Uh, what we did as a group, uh, we tried to collect some of the of the uh, case studies that we we individually work on the uh, on some of these uh, landslides around the globe. Uh, although, so the what I uh, learned earlier that although pictures are really attractive for geotechnical engineers, but I learned that uh, failures are not nice, uh, and. As I said, although appealing to the geotechnical engineers as the first one uh, in the UK, uh, you will see the type of the landslides that can occur and what is the impact of that landslide on adjacent, adjacent buildings. You can see clearly different type of geology. You can see the, the movements and the combination of different type of, uh, uh, of sliding uh, and so on. Uh, each of these landslides or uh, case studies would deserve proper uh, lecture because in, in, uh, going into details in terms of the geology, causation, triggering effect, uh, and, and so on, will, will uh, uh, take much more time than we, uh, we have allocated. But never mind, so the, we will go to, to show you some of, the, some of the examples to demonstrate what I said earlier. What is the impact of the geology, 
weathering, construction, and and so on on the landslides. On the next lens, uh, next uh, next slides. Uh, another another example, uh, although this is uh, from Italy, uh, uh, fall. So the type of the uh, uh, of the type of the uh, landslide, and you can see almost near miss. Although there is another picture showing that another big boulder just stop next to the house, and you can imagine uh, what can cause these big boulders rolling from the uh, from the mountains uh, into uh, uh, at, at the toe of, toe of the slopes. Uh, yes, it's a picturesque, but these boulders, you wouldn't like to be in that house when the boulders start rolling next, uh, close to your window. Next slide, please. Another example, uh, again, uh, what we try and the uh, beauty of the working in the work, uh, working group, uh, not only making friends, but also collecting information around the globe, because the landslides are not uh, related to the single single country. We we uh, we we collected these pictures around the globe. This is a particular one from Peru uh, for the hydropower uh, plant project. Uh, contractor did some obviously something wrong. And while they were excavating at the toe of the slope, uh, and due to weathering of the of the of the rock materials, cause landslides. Slopes. Uh, this particular slope is 190 meters high, uh, and on the right hand side you can see scales uh, of the people in relation to the slope. Half a million cubic meter of uh, rock disintegrated and uh, slid down. Uh, at, at the slope again this is a human uh, impact on the on the land, landslides plus weathering conditions you can see on the on the on the right hand side of, of the slide that they are basically fault the, the different different type different type of the color and dike uh, and that caused uh, complex geological uh, conditions which obviously contractor didn't take into account when they're designing uh, these cuttings. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a exa another example, uh, but from the Middle East. Uh, contract the, uh, another uh, slope, 150 meters high, basically cuttings uh, uh, for the road construction, uh, for the road construction, uh, contractor pretty much finished and reached the last two uh, 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 levels, each level being eight meters, these uh, benches, eight meters. Once they reach that bottom level, they use a huge quantity of explosive in order to speed up the work. Again, so these uh, small uh, silly things in order to improve cause a million cubic meters of material uh, to slide on the right hand side, you can see survey uh, post post failure survey and uh, spread of this disintegrated uh, material. On the left hand side, you can see the picture that the whole mass uh, slid down uh, tens of uh, tens of meters down 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 the slope. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, we heard a lot from our uh, colleagues earlier uh, regarding climate change. Yes, uh, it is well known that rain-induced landslides are the most common triggering events. Because for the landslide, it's always important to understand what is the triggering effects. And we are uh, uh, in the era where we, we can see clearly the impact of climate change. On the picture, on the on the uh, picture called A, we uh, we looked at the change at the average surface temperature using the model 1986-2005 and made comparison with the model 2081-2100. Uh, and you can see that so the 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 uh, the, the level of the the uh, warming up is uh, uh, evident 
and we have to deal with that. So the on the picture below below that is a change of average precipitation. As I said, so the rain rain induced landslides are the most common the uh, common cause of the of the failure. Therefore, what we did also made comparison uh, of the same uh, for the same model 1986 2005 and prediction 2081 2100. And you can see that the significant amount of the uh, increase in the surface temperature, but also amount of the precipitation that we will face uh, in the in the in the future. Next slide, please. Uh, as I said, so the the most uh, uh, important things is the triggering effect for the landslide. And what we can see, what we will see in the future, but we can see already observed that uh, more intense rainfall and higher frequency of extreme rainfall are very likely to occur. Uh, on the picture, uh, uh, on uh, down the slide, you can see the the correlation of the precipitation and the number of failures. We were privileged to work with the network rain in the UK, and uh, for the last year, due to rainfall uh, changes in rainfall patterns, have been influencing landslide. And network rain reported 252 uh, failures in 2019-2020, of which 190 uh, were in cuttings and 62 in embankments. And network rail, as uh, uh, as the owner of the asset, they would like to understand what is the impact of these uh, uh, intense rainfall and higher frequency of extreme rainfall. And we did uh, we did that studies, and it's a in public domain. You are more than welcome to look at it. Next slide, please. Uh, as a geotechnical engineer what we usually call on so the to do geotechnical investigation and uh, advise on the monitoring uh, given the fact that landslides are major natural threat to human lives uh, um, to the infrastructure assets and so on uh, therefore landslides deserve uh, proper attention of the of the community in order to prevent uh, a landslide is very difficult, but with the modern technology uh, and monitoring system or early warning system, we can uh, predict or we can reduce uh, disasters. Uh, as always, uh, analysis of collected data uh, are very important. That can guide us or inform us, better inform us on our design. Uh, uh, in, uh, influence the code of practice, influence of the of the better design. Uh, and that is a key part of the of the design process uh, to identify the need for changes in the design if necessary and when necessary. Also, we are quite often, as as Richard said, for myself, uh, quite often we will call on uh, for post completions of when failures occurs, and then working with with your group, so the uh, of uh, businesses or industry, insurance, loss adjusters, and so on. Uh, and from the insurance perspective, monitoring and analysis can be used to verify what is the cause uh, or causation of the loss, and also inform the to influence the choice of recovery of remedial actions. Quite often, post failure, uh, we have to advise uh, loss adjuster or insurance what remedial measures should be implemented to stabilize uh, the uh, landslides. On the next slide, uh, what I try to do uh, over here, although it's a crowded, but bear with me, please. Uh, I collected different type of instruments that we, uh, as geotechnical engineers, can use or implement on on either slopes or landslides. With the modern technology, 
give us a huge opportunity to use these new instruments that that are available. The problem is always cost, but that leaving aside, uh, we can discuss later. And as as uh, Stephanie mentioned earlier, we are more than happy to answer any of your questions either to uh, write it to us, or if we have time uh, QA, we, we will answer it. But for the monitoring purposes, uh, there are several instruments, like rain gauge. In the part of the world, so the, where, we are, where, where is a, a heavy rain and intensive rainfall, it's quite common to install rain gauges. They are simple instruments. They are then, so ground tilt meters, these ground tilt meters will uh, will show you how much uh, movement would occur. Ground extensiometer, again, a relatively simple instrument, will occur, will tell you how much movement uh, occur in the horizontal this uh, uh, direction or how much tension occur and cracks uh, appear. Tilt meters, like uh, like previously uh, mentioned. Uh, in the borehole, you can install tilt meters to show you, or inclinometers, uh, how much movement occur. The whole issue is to detect movements and measure velocity of the movements in order to better inform us what type of remedial measures can be installed on this one. As I said uh, uh, earlier, with the modern technology, there are uh, several instruments like GPS systems, GPS coordinates connected to the uh, modern technology and relatively small and relatively cheap uh, instruments that can that in the past didn't exist. But the modern technology, particularly with the mobile phones, uh, uh, they can be easily installed and allow monitoring. It's a, it's a no excuse that there is no monitoring on any of the landslides. You can be anywhere in the world and I'm controlling landslides or controlling slopes in Peru via my mobile phone. So therefore technology is there. It's a just matter uh, uh, to install these uh, instruments. Next slide, please. Um, why we are uh, surveying this uh, landslide. There are different reasons. We try to summarize in as a four main points. A, regular monitoring of existing slopes. This is a normal practice uh, to monitor uh, slopes in order to protect assets. Uh, the next one is the construction works. Typically when you are doing excavation or backfilling, uh, it's a quite good practice to monitor what you are doing. Sometimes you have, uh, in case of failure, emergency survey, uh, near loss situation, uh, severe damage, and so on. Or post loss, as I, as I talked earlier, uh, in order to understand, better understand what, is a, uh, what can be done in order to mitigate that, that loss. Next slide, please. Also, um, different type of monitoring uh, is related to the complexity of the, of the failure. If you have relatively simple failure, even surveying is sufficient. Size always matters. If the landslide is huge, obviously monitoring and attention to these uh, slopes are much more uh, in demand. Sometimes it's a hazard elevated hazard and also cost of either remedial measure of or loss. Next slide, please. And for any surveys or any process, uh, what we are typically doing uh, on the landslides, there is an initial planning and data acquisition during phase that the, the data is collected, uh, then on-site investigation, while we are doing so the data acquisition, it's a typical mapping on the landslide, trying to identify uh, causation, if possible, by visual inspection. Then uh, back in the office, you will review information and write a report, either to loss adjuster or insurance company. And then as a result, 
quite often we will be asked to uh, to pro to suggest what is remediation and on the on the policies aspect i will hand it over later on to to brendan and he will talk more about insurance and insurance policies next slide please yes as i mentioned there are several ways uh when you are uh when you're on site uh, Typical example is a visual inspection of findings. This is obvious when, when you see the cracks, movement of the slopes, uh, uh, then so the, it's uh, obvious that you are dealing with some, some type of failure. Is it landslide at a, uh, or retrograde landslide? It's a matter of time when it will collapse. Uh, movements of the, of the slopes can be in centimeters, up to tens of meters. We observed, Richard and myself so work on the, on, the, on the case, whereby the movements are between 10 and 15, 15 meters. We are talking about in meters. Completely destroyed the uh, infrastructure. But again, this, this would require proper uh, one hour explanation or more of the, of the, of the case. Uh, next slide, please. Um, what I would like to, uh, to complete uh, and conclude from my part of the presentation, surveying the slopes or failures sometimes is dangerous. And this is a typical example when uh, it's a well-known Conchita, uh, Lan Conchita uh, landslide that is uh, uh, already stated uh, as a warning that you are entering at your own risk. And with these slides, I would like to, for you to appreciate what geotechnical engineers are exposed to do. Yes, we, are, uh, we would like to do, we would like to survey, but sometimes there is a danger. Thank you, and I will hand it over to uh, Brandon. Yeah, thank you, Zelko. It's uh, on to the underwriting considerations. Now, you know, most of what you'll see in the next couple of slides are pretty sort of standard for any project. Uh, although I think we went through a period in the market where maybe some people didn't ask for that much, uh, much information uh, and we ended up with some poor results uh, from that. But just to sort of highlight a few sort of key items, I mean, of course, the, the type of project, the, the nature of the risk will determine the underwriting and sort of risk engineering input and analysis required. And particularly linear risks such as roads, railways, pipelines, transmission distribution lines. Of course, they're going to be typically a bit more exposed in hilly locations, especially in cat prone locations. So you, you've all heard the phrase location, location, location in respect to buying property. And of course, the same can be said for, for underwriting property risks as well. So for landslide exposures, of course, we've got to look at the terrain, the to topography, hydrology. And of course, a big part of that understanding that risk is uh, having uh, a comprehensive uh, geotechnical uh, report highlighting any issues and uh, providing any sort of recommendations on methodology. And particularly when we get into the sort of challenging locations, it has to be a high quality geotechnical engineering company providing those reports. Um, information on gradients of slopes, uh, and then method statements, uh, including any risk mitigation measures uh, such as drainage, you know, and that has to be looked at from both a permanent and a temporary uh, uh, basis as well. And that might include temporary uh, and permanent anchoring, monitoring equipment, etc. As an underwriter, or if you have your risk engineers uh, assessing the risk, full details of the materials used. Uh, a key point being that contractors must really understand the geology and the environment. And having local engineering input is vital as they know the location, they know the ground conditions. 
and there's been plenty of cases where foreign countries go into, uh, sorry, foreign contractors go into a, another sort of location that's, um, you know, different to what they see at home, but they use the same methods, the same materials as they would in their home country. Uh, and, you know, that's where we can sort of end up with uh, a lot of problems as well. So on the, the next slide, um, you know, duration, of course, how long you're going to be exposed, uh, weather conditions, hydrological and meteorological data are obviously key. And maybe one of the most uh, overlooked aspects of such risk is just basic things like access roads. So whether, you know, they're permanent or temporary, uh, access roads often won't have the same level of care and attention that the main works will have, but, and particularly where there's a DSU or a BI coverage provided, repairs of, um, of access roads can, you know, cause a big sort of delay to the overall project. And of course, access roads can be maybe more exposed to landslide than the main project. So, um, you know, we should sort of look to um, limit access roads where possible, if, you know, any one loss and in the aggregate. So we did have one, uh, it's still an ongoing sort of hydro project in Southeast Asia that suffered, uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier, they'd taken uh, the spoil out of a, a pond um, at the top of a crest, just put the spoil to, to one side at the top. And of course, the weight of all this rock on unstable and sort of ground conditions, we ended up with a landslide going down the mountain that uh, destroyed quite uh, a section of uh, the penstocks, um, which were running down about a kilometer down the mountain. And um, it also sort of uh, damaged some of the access roads as well. The, the problem was compounded by some of the local landowners didn't want to give any more um, or allow contractors uh, uh, to access these roads. So then the contractors had to look at another route to actually uh, get into the site to make repairs. And of course, that would take time uh, and money as well. So the, with this particular project where it had DSU on it, um, you know, we had a, an aggravated uh, loss there with that. Um, you know, it added another few months on to the project. Okay, oh, sorry, uh, have a little bit of a, a glitch here. Bear with me. Uh, excuse me. Uh, and then TPL uh, as well, of course, in such sort of uh, challenging locations, you have to be mindful of the third party, um, you know, uh, exposures as well. Now, CCR, um, very much like sort of project risk, we would sort of look for, for most of the uh, same sort of elements as we would uh, a project risk, location, etc. And uh, you know, a key consideration will be the maintenance carried out. I mean, many people sort of think, oh, yeah, a road, a bridge, you know, mass concrete structures. Many people think, okay, it doesn't need much maintenance, but actually it's in essential to ensure a, a healthy risk and to sort of protect the big investment that's been made. And there are many sort of national bodies which will have uh, a mandatory inspection criteria, most of which can be found on the internet. And actually, these are sort of helpful for underwriters to understand what should be uh, looked at uh, at uh, such risks. And of course, you know, such risk as well um, should have monitoring in place for those that are sort of more exposed to, to ground movement. So, Moving on to uh, our uh, conclusions and our recommendations. Um, bear with me with this. Uh, okay. 
So um, I mean, ground investigations must be at a high level, and I think many of us uh, on this sort of webinar, you know, we've all had experience uh, of you know just where ground investigations haven't been at the level uh, needed. Now, in our industry, well, just like basically every industry in the world, there's a lot of cost cutting going on all around the world. And of course, things like ground investigation, um, you know, there's a bit of sort of cutting corners on us uh, there as well. And this is an area that it has to be sort of, there has to be no expense spared. Um, we're seeing more and more sort of projects uh, uh, in areas with high exposure of uh, landslide disasters. And this is where humans are entering into more and more complex and remote locations to build projects. And uh, most require mitigation measures, but these mitigation measures cost money. Uh, I, these might be retaining walls, ground uh, anchors, etc. Uh, that a lot of um, clients just don't want to spend the money on. Uh, drainage is another big issue that, um, you know, that's often not considered. Even on a temporary basis, this drainage uh, has got to be, uh, you know, adequate for, for during the works and, of course, for when the, the, the project has been completed as well. Climate risks, ESG, is a big topic um, for, for all our companies now. And uh, with the projected increase in surface temperatures, um, you know, we're expected to have uh, more prolonged and more intensive rainfall. And of course, this will increase landslide risk. And with ice caps melting, this also contributes to avalanche. Um, as per the Himalayan landslide uh, in February this year. And then, of course, for us as, um, uh, um, uh, as uh, companies, we have to look at the ESG risk, um, you know, and the associated sort of reputational issues that can go with, um, you know, uh, being involved with projects in contentious locations, um, you know, with a, with a desire to leave precious ecological environments undisturbed. Monitoring, uh, I think as uh, Dr. Zelko sort of mentioned, you know, monitoring can be sort of pretty cheap and very effective, uh, and you know, uh, and that's got to be a key part of any risks that are exposed to uh, to landslide. Uh, risk engineering, um, uh, making sure that you have the right risk engineer for the right project. I mean, I think a number of us have seen it in our career where there might be, um, I don't know, a civil engineer going out to have uh, have a look at a gas fired sort of power plant because that insurer only has one risk engineer. As always, it's got to be the right risk engineer for the right uh, for the right project. So they've got to have the right discipline behind them. Uh, obviously, preferably a geotechnical engineer. Um, would be preferred for, for such projects. And then as underwriters, it's always about having sort of reasonable sort of limits, sublimits. I mentioned about access roads there earlier. And, um, you know, there have been times as well that like removal of debris uh, can actually be a massive cost in, uh, in you know, in the event of uh, a claim that can sort of make up uh, a very big part of it but it's about being um you know measured in regards to these uh, limits and sublimits so i think um there um dr zelko do you want to um, add anything to these sort of conclusions and recommendations anything else from from your position there Oh, I think you nicely summarize. I think uh, only one thing that uh, maybe we should portray uh, to convey as a message. Uh, yeah, education of youngsters uh, for risk engineering. So the, this is a key uh, for, for our profession to properly educate youngsters that they can take uh, uh, our roles.
OK, thank you for that, Dr. Zelko. So um, guys, am I seeing any sort of questions? I can't uh, yeah, Brendan, see any. We only have, we, Brendan, we only have one question. OK. And it's about uh, in quake zones. Are there any uh, particular measures over and above that those you would have normally to detect which slopes are more exposed in quake areas? Well, Dr. Um, Zelko, over to I you. Can, I can answer, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, there are several, as you know, so there are several areas around the world. Um, again, so the I will refer back to early monitoring systems. They are well advanced. I can take examples of uh, uh, examples in Turkey, uh, South America, pretty much all these zones where we expect the, 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 uh, the earthquakes to happen. I think the next one, next big one, and again, it's very difficult to predict when earthquakes will occur, although there are some uh, measures uh, how to uh, inform us better when the earthquake occur. Uh, I would again go back to so the early warning systems and look at the data. So the, uh, there are several examples of well-established these data centers around the world, uh, and we should refer back to them. Okay, well, as, as I've got time, I'll ask a question. Do, do, would you yes, recommend please. as a working group uh, a formal risk management um, system in place for projects which are exposed to landslide? From the underwriting perspective or yes. from the geotechnical? Yeah. Well, both, both. In the same way that we, we uh, underwriters ask for a formal risk management in tunneling projects. Yeah. Mm. So, Mike, like a code of practice. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Zelka, I think that's about having a, if you like, a, a code of practice, a risk management framework that maybe sort of uh, contractors could could follow for the for the project. Yeah, I'm well aware of the tunneling. So the, there is a, uh, a do document uh, written for engin engineers and insurance for the tunneling work. Uh, yes, uh, there is a possibility. So it would be nice. Uh, the only the only issue is uh, is the time, uh, um, but uh, maybe it's a it's a good point. So maybe it's worth talking to to insurance uh, loss adjuster and so on and make working group. Mm. Okay, maybe uh, Dr. Zelka. Maybe one thing. Maybe it might be a last question. But um, the cost of the monitoring equipment. Um, you know, it's, would you be able to give any idea to um, to everyone, maybe about those costs? Right. I mean, okay. some people think, yeah, yeah, yeah. are they prohibitive? Uh, can we afford that? Um, you know, some of these actually seem like they could be quite cheap. Uh, coming back to, to monitoring, uh, the, uh, uh, it's a not universal, depending of the of the scale of the of the project. Uh, uh, as we said, so that it can be of, uh, I don't know, a couple of thousand pounds to hundreds of thousands so uh, pounds. Uh, but with the modern technology, with the satellite images, uh, sensoring and so on, uh, there is a different way of obtaining obtaining data. Uh, the key, key aspect to it so that is to identify the problems and then so that, uh, put a monitoring system in place. Uh, as I said, with the new modern technology, these chips, the pretty much the same uh, the stuff what we are using in our mobile are, uh, can be installed either on tunnels or, uh, um, um, or slopes and so on. It's an interesting point. So the, and there is an article uh, in The Economist uh, written by our founder, uh, Professor Lord Mayer. He said that Mechanical engineers, or let, better to say, Rolls Royce uh, knows at every time uh, how their motor in the aviation industry is performing. When you ask engineers 
how structure or slopes performing said yeah it's stable but we don't know anything else therefore i think there is a shift in demand uh to install this monitoring system uh and as i said it's a depending of the case uh, we can look case by case uh scenario and uh, advise what is appropriate there is a huge advance for the um, optical cables that they can use for the slope and there are a lot of research going on uh into that so the imperial us cambridge and so on therefore we are more than happy to share knowledge and it's a publicly in public domain but so the as you mentioned quite rightly there is a lot of uh uh cost cutting everywhere including uh geotechnical investigation monitoring okay thank you for that dr zelka so uh if there are any sort of more questions i think as was noted um you can actually uh, we, we're recording these and we can sort of email back to you later on so i think we're pretty much on time so we'll hand over to stefan lamley and uh mike spencer to talk about the important topic of uh company limited by guarantee is that right stefan that's correct thanks brendan okay. dr selko okay. brendan thank you very much for that highly interesting presentation i'm really pleased that uh, my house is standing on even grounds uh, but uh, the pictures you showed and the explanations were quite uh, an awakening yeah um yeah. before you Go away, Brendan and Dr. Selko. Uh, the question is, may we put your working group paper on the EMEA webpage now? Maybe publish it. Yep, I think it's uh, all ready to go. So. Okay, perfect. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. Good. And with this, um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, a less uh,